Controlling the movement of trains is fundamental to running a safe railway. That's what signals do, and they do it in a few different ways. Not every signal is a coloured light on a tall post, which is probably the image that first came to your mind. Some use mechanical arms, others sit low between the tracks, and a few show when a diverging route has been set. In this video, I'll show you the four main types of signal used in the UK railway network. Semaphore signals, colour light signals, route indicators, and ground signals. And I'll explain where you'll see them, what each one does, and why all four are still relevant. Let's start with the oldest type still in use, the semaphore signal. Mechanical arms that physically move to show whether a train should stop or proceed. They date back to the 19th century, but they're not just still in use, they're actively maintained and occasionally renewed on parts of the UK network. You'll typically see them on low speed, rural or freight heavy lines, areas where full re-signalling hasn't been prioritised or isn't justified. You'll still find them on parts of the Cambrian line for example, or rural branches down in the southwest. They're often still fully mechanical, operated from local signal boxes via wires and counterworks. Many include the lamps to light the coloured lenses at night. There are two main types to know. Stop signals that protect stations, junctions or the next section of track. These are also known as home signals. They have a red arm. A horizontal arm means stop. An angled arm, usually at 45 degrees, means proceed. This is so that if the wire controlling the signal snaps or there is any other issue, gravity takes over and the signal falls to the stop position, failing safe. Distant signals are positioned in advance of a home signal, giving the driver advance warning of the state of the next signal. They're usually yellow with a distinctive v-shaped fishtail cut at the end. They don't instruct a stop. Instead, they warn the driver whether the next home signal is clear, giving them time to prepare to stop. This is known as caution. It's the notch and the colour that gives it away. Yellow with a fishtail means it's a distant. Colour light signals are the modern replacement for semaphore arms. They use coloured lights, red, yellow and green, to show the driver whether they need to stop be prepared to stop at the next signal or if it's safe to proceed at full line speed. These are known as aspects, but the different colour combinations pack in a lot of meaning. There are several types of colour light signals you might see. A two aspect, just a red and a green. Then there's the three aspect, which adds a single yellow for caution. Four aspect, which includes a double yellow, offering even more warning distance. Particularly important on high speed or busy lines. This is a preliminary caution, indicating that the next signal will show a single yellow. You'll usually see these on fast intercity lines, where high speeds means drivers need more advanced warning. These signals are mounted on posts or gantries, and are far more visible in poor weather or darkness than mechanical arms. Older signals used filament lamps, but most modern versions now use LEDs for brightness, energy efficiency, and reduce maintenance. Colour light signals are part of a broader control system of track circuits or axle counters detect whether a train is in a section of track. That information is sent to the signalling system and control centres, which uses it to set routes and update signals automatically, keeping trains at a safe distance apart. They've become the standard across the main line, but as you'll see, not the only signal you need to know. Curves have a big effect on the distance at which drivers can see signals. If you want to understand more about how these curves are designed, check out my horizontal geometry course. Link is in the top right hand corner now or below in the description. Look above some colour light signals and you might see a diagonal row of five small white lights. That's a feather indicator, officially known as a position light junction indicator. Feathers are used where the line splits, at junctions, crossovers, or where multiple platforms or sidings branch off the same main line. Each diagonal row of white lights indicates a diverging route. A left-leaning feather indicates a route diverging to the left from the driver's perspective. A right-leaning feather indicates a route diverging to the right. Where there are multiple diverging options, different feathers will show, depending on which route is set. In the UK, there can be a maximum of six routes, three on the left, three on the right, and if no feather is lit, the route is set for the main or straight ahead path. Feathers don't replace the main signal, they supplement it, giving the driver a visual cue about the direction of travel they're about to take. 
ground signals, more properly known as shunt signals or position light signals, are used to control low speed movements, typically in yards, sidings and depots. They're designed for movements below 25 miles per hour and operated independently from the main signals used for high speed running, controlling shunting and depot moves instead. They manage safe movement of trains in tight spaces. If you've ever looked down between the rails and spotted a small triangle, you are looking at one. You'll find two main types, disc signals. Now a rare sight are the mechanical semaphore signal equivalent of a position light signal. A rotating disc with a red bar. When that bar is horizontal, stop. When it's diagonal, proceed. These are legacy equipment, mostly replaced, but you still occasionally see them. Position light signals, the modern type. Three lights arranged in an inverted triangle. Two at the top, when the diagonal pair is lit, proceed. Lighting arrangements can include red and white lights, depending on the design. A shunting variety may have white and yellow lights. The triangle shape is key. Watch out for it between the rails next time you're looking at the track. Ground signals are often positioned between tracks, especially where space is tight, like in yards. That creates potential clearance problems, especially for wider vehicles or those with low steps or parts of the train body. These signals keep depots and sidings running safely, controlling complex low speed operations away from the main line. Where a signal is placed isn't guesswork. It's carefully reviewed by a signal sighting committee. These are multidisciplinary groups that include engineers, operators, and driver representatives. Their job is to make sure a signal can be clearly seen from the cab with enough time to react, based on the line speed, track gradient, curvature, and any other obstructions. A signal that looks fine from the ground may be invisible from the cab at 90 miles an hour. From a cab, visibility changes everything. Signal type, location and layout all influence where the signal goes and whether additional indicators or repeaters are needed to support driver visibility. The various options, layouts, signal variations and local intricacies are why drivers have to learn and demonstrate knowledge of a route before they are passed to drive it. This is known as signing the route or route knowledge. So those are the four signal types you're most likely to see on the UK railway. Semaphore signals still going strong after all these years, mostly in rural or freight only areas. Color light signals, the modern backbone of the signaling system. Position light junction indicators or feathers for those diverging route information. For more information for drivers on diverging routes. Shunt or position light signals, also known as ground signals, essential for those shunting and depot operational routes. Each have their place. If you work around the railway or plan to, you'll benefit from knowing what they are how they work and where you're likely to find them. Where signals go and when drivers can see them is heavily influenced by the curvature of the track and that all comes back to horizontal alignment. If you want to understand how curves are designed and why they matter, check out my horizontal track geometry course. The link's in the description. If this video has helped you, give it a like and let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next.